Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Scarborough Country, the virus edition, a.k.a. the Pandy Pods. A.k.a. the Victory Blast. A.k.a. two Jews, no Rod Carews. A.k.a. two bros, uh, a little ways to goes, but we're feeling pretty good. Yes. And we're not saying no's to the future. That's right. Now I'm going to get a couple more AKs because you guys have done such good ones. Uh, with the mad one uh, outrun... And his bad sons outdone. We need rad puns fine spun from Addison Walton. Hello. AKA Mike Huddleston, AKA Huddletron, AKA the AKA guy, AKA Old Zealand. Thank you once again for including other people. By the way, everybody who came to see the live Dumb People Town this past weekend with John Hamm and Tennis, you were treated to such a beautiful musical performance by Tennis. They were amazing. Ham, Ham was hilarious. Ham was hilarious. We, we had, had a Greenlee. Greenlee. We had a Greenlee. And uh, it just was a beautiful, beautiful time. Great time spent with everybody. We all, we we listened to the, uh, we, we in the pre-show meet and greet, we hung for 10 minutes and then Kamala Harris started talking. So we're like, everybody go watch. Everybody came back. We hung out some more. Dan cried when he talked about how his He's, grandmother called him and sang, happy days are here, here again. again. It was a, a beautiful, emotional, amazing night and wonderful to celebrate with you guys. There's a lot more work to do uh, installing this guy in there, but it's a step in the right direction. We still have really dumb, funny stuff to talk about. Yeah, that's the, the, the good news is that we got a little good news on the pandemic front, too, that uh, Pfizer has a, a vaccine that seems to be at least 90% effective. Completely unrelated to uh, Operation Warp Speed. It was its own thing. So We'll talk about that a little bit later. But the good news is... Uh, we're, things are looking up, and we're trying to be positive and look forward in a new way, uh, and we appreciate you guys being on this journey with us. That doesn't mean we're going to stop doing this show every day, because we need it. We need it to survive. We need it to get through. Uh, and we announced uh, at the show on Saturday night who our guests will be on our next live Dumb People our Town. Our holiday Dumb People Town on Saturday, December 12th. It's Dave Anthony and Gareth Reynolds of The Dollop. If you're not listening to The Dollop podcast, what One are you One of the best doing? podcasts out there. It's uh, a podcast about history where they riff. They are the two of the best uh, riffers and podcasters out there. It'll be a we coming together them. dollop people town. Dollop people town with musical guest Mac Lethal, one of the fastest rappers in the entire country and the world, by, mind you. Yes. And Kansas City's own Mac Lethal. So uh, tickets are on sale right now. Get your tickets for let's that. And jump we'll keep into this right, on. All right now. Let's do it. I don't know about you, Rand, but yeah. I, I think about that Black Mirror episode. There are a few episodes that really stick out to me where the woman's husband dies and then yeah, there's this spoiler alert. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Well, it starts. If you haven't you... seen Black Mirror, it's been around for five years. Right. Whatever. So I'm going to tell you a story about an episode that happened. If you so, don't want to listen to it, don't listen to it. No, this. but here's the deal. So the, her husband dies, and there's a service out there that amalgamates, that reads all of the emails and texts that he's voice ever sent. Voicemails and whatnot. And takes the voicemails and takes the voice and then picks all the common words that this person would use. It's almost like when you're typing an email and it finishes the sentence for you you in gmail they do it a lot and it's exactly what i would have written yeah it they says know. exactly and it's they like wow you, you know my tendencies you know what mm -hmm. i want to say so i collect all that and then this woman could have a conversation on the phone with her dead husband which is freaky at first and it's freaky for her at first and then she starts to get into but it but missing this guy this was what she needed in that moment but then then there's a chance to bump it up a notch mm -hmm. where you can order a human doll that's in the shape and really is basically your ex or this person, this person who you lost in your life, your dog, your person in your life. This company does that for you. That's where you have to pay more money. And she found herself like not wanting to be in the phone thing. And then she needed it so much. Drew into it. So and then she decided orders to get, the doll. Yeah. And when the doll's there, she loves it in some ways. And then she notices very clearly why it's off. Because it's, it's we are made up of our wonderful moments and our not wonderful moments. Right, and our tendencies, and then when we step out of our tendencies- That's part of it too. That's what makes us up. When we do things out of character, when we do the thing that, the one thing that you, I was in a fight, we were in a text argument with someone about politics, and uh, and it was getting heated to the point where I was gonna tell someone to fuck off. And instead I said, you know what, man, I love you, you're amazing. And it, it was such a great 
You didn't see it coming. and then I it, didn't even see it coming. I just started typing. I didn't know I was going to say that. And then it took all the heat and the air out of the argument. And then we were fine again. I, even when you get into heated moments with your kids to come out on the other side of that argument, I'm always surprised at, at where life takes you and leads you. And that's not something you can formulaically put in there. Right. So I love that Black, Black Mirror episode. For me, like, you know, in certain moments in shows, like Curb Your Enthusiasm is at its best when Larry's kind of a little bit right. It's in the gray area. He's right. And he's maybe not but right. Maybe he shouldn't have said something about it, but he's Come right. see the baby. I don't want to see the baby. Who Who's that for? Is that for you or is that for the baby? The baby doesn't give a shit the if you go see it or not. The baby doesn't care if I go up and see the but baby. But Larry's like being honest about something that we all just kind of do, and now it makes these people mad, but he's, he's kind of right. right. Black Mirror is the same thing. It's like the movie Her. It's like, can we get to a situation where, you know... Uh, Deep it, questions. And also believable technology like that's right is the, this could be happening right now it's not like a, such a futuristic world that we're like it's not like blade runner it's yeah. like where there's someone with three eyes all of a sudden right. we're gonna have mutant people among us right. so yeah. it created a future where we're kind of where we are right uh and in the most black weir- mirror creepy way japan <laughs> has tried to tackle a major issue in their society because of covid yeah because of the lockdown yep. in the most japanese futuristic terrifyingly weird and off way. So because people are quarantined in in Japan and in Asia, they are following restrictions a lot. There's a mask mandate. You have to stay home. Like, and everyone is, you know, or or they're not working. So when they say, look, isolate yourself, people are isolating and loneliness is setting in. It's a big deal. It's become a huge social issue in Japan, prompting robotics researchers to develop everything from humanoid robots to furry, Cybernetic seals for isolated people to interact with at home. I want a cybernetic seal. I want seal. one. I want Not one. Not the animal seal. I want. I want the, the singer, singer seal who was married to Heidi Klum. Okay, fine. just so I can club him. Do you and call not, her Klum? Not club. Klum. 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 You said Klum. I want to club with him. I don't want to club him. I want to club with him. I want to go clubbing with seal. That's right. Is that weird? No. That I want to take him clubbing. Of course, Japan. It's only weird if you call him baby. Of course, Japan is cranking out the sex robots. They that, are. That's what they do, man. That goes without saying. That's like saying Japan also has some tiny backpacks. That's like saying Japan uh, it, it likes baseball. Yeah, that's like saying Japan has some crazy game shows. Or or just a little bit of anime. Yeah, say, saying Japan is cranking out sex robots is like saying Japan has some sushi restaurants. I think they do. It's like saying Japan loves rock and roll bands that were once great here. It's like saying Japan has some American wrestling. They do. They just do. They just do. There's a whole circuit there. And these sex robots that they're making, they're becoming ever more sophisticated, sophisticated realistic. See, we're heading into the, t- the Black Mirror territory. In an attempt to create the intimacy that adults can enjoy. For example, they are now teaching sex robots to say, hey, it's okay, that happens to everyone. Let's watch a movie for a while, then maybe we can try again. Or not. We don't have to try again. No pressure. I'm just having fun being with you. Okay, that's what the robot is saying? No, I made okay, that up. But wouldn't that be amazing be if amazing. that's what they're yeah. teaching it to do? But robotics really researchers at japan's can they make a robot play hard to get so that when you get the robot it actually feels like you like earn a, it yes like feels japan's like gifu university went further building a device that's yeah a robot that like becomes attracted to your best friend yeah <laughs> uh R- gifu university went further building a device that simulates going for a long leisurely walk with a loved one which it at once feels like the best idea in the world and the worst idea. In the it kind of does, but I, I get the I get where they're coming from and why they want that intimacy in that. Sure, moment. if you're lonely, that's part of it. Companionship, taking a walk. That's right. The researchers, Koshiro. like when you found out in her that, and I don't want to give anything away. If you haven't seen her, what is wrong with you? you Spoiler alert: Just don't listen right now. Yeah. When you found out or understood that. You know, Scarlett Johansson's voice, that operating system was doing that for millions of other things. And that relationship, which he thought was super intimate, the way she was responding to him. This is Alexa. When you when Alexa has like the basic conversation with you, that it was it felt so real. It felt so personal. And then when it wasn't. That to me was that's like, wow, that was such a wonderful twist. I, I feel Great like that, that's one of the biggest twists in movies. Un, that's an underrated movie too. Uh, the researchers twist. Koshiro Shiraki and uh-huh. Toru Natsumata, mm-hmm. Moki Miki and Tekuru. Moki Mi- Moka Miki is my favorite. Moka uh, Miki. Of the Moka Miki. Uh-huh. Uh, and Takiro Mushika said, for some people. Hey, pe- Moka Miki. Miki. All right. uh, <laughs> say, for some people, finding a girlfriend is very difficult. And by some people, 
we mean the robotics researchers like these people. Koshiro Shiraki Teru Notsumata. Koshiro Shiraki Teru Matsumata. Koshiro Shiraki Teru Notsumata. Hey, Mokimiki. Hi. So they set out to create a way for lonely young men to experience holding your girlfriend's hand more easily than finding a girlfriend than itself. Finding a so basically it's a bunch of robot researchers saying, how can we chip away at the power that women have <laughs> over men? So it's a bunch of dudes. We've already taken the sex thing out of it. Yeah, that's right. Right. So we've already, we've already reduced their power over sex by building sex robots. Sure. Now let's, let's take away intimacy. Let's take on intimacy, let's, right? Let's go. Why, why work hard to earn someone's intimacy by getting to know them and by building a very real and, and complicated, complicated bond complicated, yeah. when you can just buy a robot that's right that's that's the point of what they're doing that's where they're spending their energies randy that's i mean it's like attacking male pattern baldness for now the majority of sex robot manufacturers the sci uh scientists have decided just to emulate a female companion uh i don't know it's weird they they haven't done that for this mm -hmm. They're like, let's do some research and find out what's re what really goes on. In a recently published paper titled My Girlfriend in Walk. What's My Girlfriend in Walk? What is that? It sounds like it could be a new Postal Service song. Do you know Postal Service just released a new song? My Did they Girlfriend really? In Walk? No. Oh, no. That'd be great. I wish it would be My I Girlfriend was. in Walk. The team published designs for a sophisticated- I believe So you. they're not building- I know you did. I sold it to you. They're not building a complete person. No. They they're team just- they publish designs Is for it a, just a hand? A sophisticated robotic female hand, hand. that grips and moves and As even you, sweats like the real thing. Sweats. Sweats. Sweats like the real thing. So there's a moment where you gotta let go. It's just a hand. Just a detached when hand. When you ever I was just walking like a woman. I was walking with my wife and we were holding hands as we were walking, and then there was a moment where it just was like this is uncomfortable and it doesn't mean that I, there's like that moment where you're like, I got to let go. It doesn't mean that I don't love you. Right. I love you, but we let go first, but we got to let go because this is just uncomfortable and we both have to be okay with it. And in that moment where we both let go and we're like, we don't need to do this anymore. I loved her even more because I'm like, we both were like, yeah, we, whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was great, but then we're like, whatever. So they built this robotic female hand, a complex elbow mounted sliding rail. Hold on a second. Complex elbow mounted sliding rail. I'm getting hot. Yeah. Did you say complex amount elbow mounted sliding rail? That's is, exactly what I said. Is there anything more convenient than that, Randy? When I think long leisurely walk with uh, a lover, with a lover, I cannot help but envision first and foremost a, a complex, complex elbow mounted sliding hand. Yes, complex elbow mounted sliding rail mimics the push and pull of when a person you're holding hands with slows down and speeds up slightly, slightly, S slightly, slightly, and the vice, vice. So I guess it is like a relationship. <laughs> I can't let go. Vice tightening. Yeah. The vice uh, is even paired with a smartphone app that plays the sound of a woman's footsteps and the rustlings of their clothes as they move. This is where, okay. This Was is this where, created by the Golden State Killer? This is where J Japan tends to focus on one or two details that you're like, don't do that. Don't do it. You're a serial killer. You don't killer. need to. As we've a are, nation, you're we've a serial. already accomplished what we need to do, but now you're really drilling down on two details that make it really the weird. The rustle of the clothes. Is that the thing? The rustle of the clothes? The pliable skin. And skin, by the way, is in quotes. So you know it's What not does even, that mean? It's you know not it's even not even close to no, skin. It's rubber. Is heated to The skin is heated to human body temperature and pores release liquid from a reservoir inside to get that reassuringly sweaty feel. You know how reassuring that sweaty feeling is? No. When you sweat it's something is you, making you sweat and when you love someone or when you're new in a relationship you don't focus on the sweat and you don't care when you've been in a relationship for a long time and you're sweating and you hold hands with someone like, we don't need to do this you're my like, hands let me are just wipe my hand on my pants a little balmy even if you're head over heels in love with someone you still want to wipe your hand off that's right uh, so the device is also scented with a subtle perfume mm -hmm. that is supposed to replicate the mixture of soap shampoo and cosmetics right that you might smell while walking with a real life you know, shampoo yeah who shampoos their hands serial killer shampoo their hands <laughs> it's a golden state killer well, to, to get i mean if you are putting out. shampoo in your hair the sum is going to get on your hands no but golden state killer is the consultant on this am i right to say that probably Maybe golden K state killer robot hand consultant that he can put that on his resume the team says that part of the impetus behind the invention is to provide comfort for those who might be living isolated lifestyles during i don't mind that part of it no I think me too giving these people I think it's great. 
But is this going to give them comfort? That's what I know. I can't wait to spend some time with my mechanical hand that's mounted in a complex way <laughs> on my elbow. When, Who is saying that? When couples walk by me, they're going to be jealous. Yeah, and I definitely won't feel weird or less than when I walk by them holding my complex elbow well, railing, sliding rail, sliding rail hand, hand. and they're with another human. I am actually all for people going outside and walking. Can I yes, just say that right now? I am now? too, but I feel like like a podcast where a robotic woman talks to you in your ear. I mean, not to go back to her, but that is way better. It's like, more fulfilling. It's more intimate than a and complex elbow mounted uh, sliding rail hand that sweats shampoo. And yes, <laughs> the thing that sweating shampoo may sound eccentric to many. Uh, the growing hikamori trend in Japan where young people lock themselves away indoors without ever going out yeah. suggests that there might be a market for this strange looking invention. I think so it could it work. it feels weird, yes, but they're banking on the fact that people are- If are, there's a market for it, go do it. And I, look, I'm making fun of this thing. Watch it. Watch it become the it's biggest become the TikTok next thing in, the, in the world. It's going to be like the next Tamagotchi egg. It's going to be on everybody's TikTok, this yep. little thing. And you know what? Weird things that are outside of the box that seem like they would fail immediately. Sometimes are the biggest things in the world. So you know what? I'm here to say that I might be completely wrong about this thing. And there may be a time in my life where I'm going to need a complex elbow-mounted elbow mounted mounted sliding, sliding arm that's sweats, connected to a sweaty hand that sweats shampoo. shampoo. Okay, that's story number one down in the books. Uh, story number two all has to do with a uh, COVID, a, a, an election night viewing party at the White House that turned into a super spreader. That's a surprise. Woo! So on the other side of this, uh, we have the Sklar Brothers, uh, and this is Sklar Bro Country, the virus edition. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the show. As we mentioned at the top of the show, eventbrite.com. Look up Live Don't People Town, December 12th. We're going to be donating some of the proceeds to two separate charities, one for seniors, one for kids. It's the holiday. Have your holiday party with us. Saturday, December 12th, 6.30 p.m., uh, we got Gareth Reynolds and Dave Anthony from The Dollop. It's Dollop People Town, and our musical guest is Mac Lethal. It is going to be a blast. It's so These shows are so much fun. And we Tickets really are want flying off the shelves like hotcakes. Get them right now and uh, be a part of the pre-show, post-show hang. Those were so much fun last time. Uh, let that be our thing. Also, as we head into the holiday season, Jay and I are on Cameo. We've We'd been doing a lot to, of Cameos. We've been doing a bunch of Cameos. They're so much fun. We tailor make them to you. You, you send us a message or who you want to send a message to. It's and very we simple. we do it and it's been so rewarding for us to do them and we know because the feedback we're getting is so great. Just look for us on- uh, Sklar Brothers on Cameo yeah. and, the, and that's a great little uh, great present gift. you can send to someone and and it, and it guarantees you to get there. It lasts. They can there. watch it over and over again and it's just super fun. So check that out. All all right. right, let's when, get into Okay, this. when your election night watch party becomes a COVID-19 super spreader event, as Randy mentioned, and you're the White House. It's time for a change. It's wholesale time to, change, right, Rand? Get them out. Get them out. Is there anything the more fitting than that at this like point, Rand? That's the way to go out. That's it. And no, by the way, we're not saying we want people to get COVID-19. We, we don't. We don't. We don't want people but to get COVID-19. But now Ben Carson, who is the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, has tested HUD. positive for the novel coronavirus. Trump- by the way, is he's handing out COVID at the White House like he's Oprah handing out cars. You get COVID. You get COVID. You get COVID. Chris Christie, you get COVID. You get COVID. Ah! Ben Carson, you, you get, get COVID. COVID. I get COVID. My son gets COVID. Let's all get COVID. Everyone gets COVID. Carson's deputy chief of staff says he's in good spirits. It's he great. feels fortunate to have access. I'm sure access. he feels at better than I've he never did felt when more he did. fortunate. I'm sure he felt better than he did when he didn't have COVID. Yeah, I that's feel, what you're. That's the picture you're painting. That's the pretzel people have to force themselves to get. That's into. what you have to say around Trump to make him feel good about having. I feel it. better because I Thank got you COVID. for this. Thank COVID. you for the COVID. Oh, you gave me a gift. I really appreciate. I feel this. so good now. I was breathing totally fine, but you no, know what? I needed a little restriction in my lungs. He's happy. Carson's deputy chief of staff says because he's, good he's got effective therapeutics which aid and markedly sp speed his recovery. Of course, you have access to the drugs. Translation: the You're happy. You're not a normal American. You're yeah. happy. You're not the people who have to really deal with this. Yeah, you, everyone in America doesn't have access to a crazy crazy cocktail of drugs that will preserve and save your life. He is going to be fine, most likely. Let's yes. just say that. Carson, Carson attended the election night watch party at the White House last week. For translation, he was forced to attend. Thank you. Uh, if someone would have said to me, Rand, for real, yeah. someone would have said, hey, hey, do you want to watch the election? Somewhere? Do you want to come to an election party? My first thought would be like, wait, a, a what now? now? A party? A, a party? Right now. 
yeah, a party? And they're like, yeah, party. No, no masks. No, yeah. And they're like, yeah, indoors? Yep. 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 With a group of people who most likely have COVID. Yep. Sign me up. Sounds awesome. That Let's sounds do it. great. Let's do it. I'll bring the chips and the dip that someone will continually dip their one Double chip dip into. into. Yeah. yeah. White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows told associates last Wednesday that he tested positive for COVID-19. Oh, my God. Meadows this- also attended, also attended the watch night party. The election watch party. Election watch party. The night before. That's insane. This is insane. This is a-, a The nation is in the midst of a forest fire right now. That's what COVID is. And these assholes are lighting up stogies. And then tossing the matches on the ground while on they're dry still leaves. And saying, eh, eh whatever. whatever. The election night party featured little social distancing. Of course. And almost no masks. And Meadows and Carson and a number of undisclosed White House staff members are testing positive. Well, can you blame them? Can I mean, you blame them? It, it's not like we don't. It's not like we have any information about how this how virus it spreads. spreads. So it's not like the president it, it, told uh, Bob Woodward in a conversation in February that it spreads airborne wise. Well, it's hard to blame anyone, is mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. This event has faced harsh scrutiny, particularly given the White House refusal to disclose who has been affected. In fact, are they disclosing it to each other? Because that could be fun. Yeah. You got to guess who's got it. Maybe you. I don't know. Check it out. It's like Secret Santa. Yeah. Only you know what everybody's getting you. Yeah. Mark Meadows. You You get get COVID. COVID. Oprah. The Los Angeles Times reported that many White House and campaign officials and those who attended the election night party were not informed about the diagnosis and only found out when they were reported in the media. That seems fair. Yeah. Why, I mean, why only, tell why tell them about their own personal condition? It's only a disease that's killed a quarter of a million Americans in eight months. Seems fair. Seems fair. PBS News is Yamichi Al Cinder. Lou El, uh, I was going to say Lou Al Cinder's daughter. daughter. Uh, she reported that she spoke to a number of aides on election night, quote, who were worried the event would become a super spreader and felt pressure to go to save face. Oh my God. So they felt oh pressure my God. to save face, but no one gave them pressure to cover their face. Yeah, got it. Okay. okay. That's fine. Okay, got it. now I understand. So By the way, we've all had jobs at, we uh, too have had jobs at offices and events that you don't want to go to. The company float trip, the yeah. company picnic. The weekend retreat, the, the games night. But what if in addition to having to play Pictionary with your unfunny boss- <laughs> You also were told that you were going to contract a deadly disease. Probably. That night. You got to play fibbage with him, but at the same time, you won't be able to feel your rib cage because you're Cards against will be. humanity, life against life. Mm-hmm. The promotion is going to take you straight to the top if you get this. Mm-hmm. And by the top, we mean the clouds in heaven if you believe in that. Yeah. So far, excluding Carson, six White House aides and a Trump campaign staffer have tested positive for the virus since the days before and after the election night party. So this is what the New York Times is reporting. That is horrible. Yeah. That, that would be like, what would that be like? That'd be like booking a an important press conference uh-huh. next door to a porn shop and a crematorium. Oh, yeah. But then cremating some of your employees who are there helping you set up the conference. And, and they just saying, go along with it to... To, to save, save face. face, yes. Burn, I'm sorry, burn my body. And I gotta get cremated that because hot oven. turn me into a bowl of ashes. Because I'd rather die. It's gonna be better for me on Monday than if I don't show up. It's saving face. Overall, more than three dozen people associated with Trump in the White House have been infected. Mm-hmm. That is insanity. Okay, no, we need to say that out loud. That is not a normal thing. No, that it's is ins- absurd. So stupid. The president, the first lady. Their son, they got their son involved. Yeah, he, Trump's White House counselor, Hope Hicks, also tested positive. His campaign manager, Bill Bill Step Stepian Stepian Stepian. I don't even know Stepian. It's one of the only things they've done, by the way, this administration that has yielded positive results. I just in, in the entirety that. of their administration. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I would say that. And as we record this, there was an announcement made that Pfizer, by Pfizer, and we mentioned this earlier in the show. They've had vaccine trials. That 90, are, a 90% success rate. And that's news is coming out just after the election, which- Fauci applauded the news. Fau, you know Fauci, the guy that Trump said he's going to fire, fire right, right after, after the election? election. Yeah. Okay, he, sure. So yeah, I think that's cool. Give yeah. him time off. Give, yeah. give him a little time off before Biden, Biden rehires, rehires him again. Yeah, exactly. Trump and Vice President Mike Pence celebrated the Pfizer news. And tried to take credit for it. Right. And said that it was a joint achievement between, tr- between Pfizer and the administration. Then the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer was like, nope. That's yeah. not that no, we weren't, not we weren't 
We didn't take taxpayer money. We we're weren't not a part of warp speed. That's yeah. what they kept saying. Yeah, we're not part of it. Catherine Jensen, a senior vice president of the board of uh, the vaccine. We've research. never taken any money from the U.S. government. That you, they were, they, or from anyone. They said because they, they're they don't want your one. They they want all the money themselves when they get it. Pfizer did a better job distancing itself from the president and Mike Pence than anyone at that election night watch party. Yeah. And what's ironic is that the first company to kind of hit on a vaccine in America is not part of Operation Warp Speed. So it, this is even more proof that it had nothing to do with Trump. I don't know. It's it like, feels good to have a, a, a nice slice good of slice good of good news. Yeah. Uh, we'll hopefully understand what this means for our future and how quickly it will help us return to normal. But it is insane to me, man. I don't know how, how quickly it's going to bring us back to normal. Who knows? But it is kind of insane to me that once the cloud of this clown is starting to get lifted. A there little is bit of sunshine peeks through. Sunshine Think about that. Through. Think about it. And, and we're talking to you, Ben Carson. If, if you, you aren't too disoriented. From getting COVID. That, unable to smell anything. That could have totally been avoided. Yeah. There it is. That's a show. That is it. Our first show back after uh, the election results of this weekend. Guys, let's do our part. Uh, tell everyone you know in Georgia to vote in this runoff. Vote, vote, vote. Get your tickets for the live Dumb People Town on uh, December 12th. Uh, stay connected, stay protected, don't get infected. We love you guys. This is not a hoax. But we've got the jokes. Wear a mask. Listen to what the new COVID uh, task force has to say. Uh, we are we'll very We'll get excited. through this, guys. We're going to get through this. We're going to do it, and we'll see you tomorrow. La-dee-da. La-dee-da-dee-da-dee-da. La-dee-da-dee-da.